Hello again, everybody, and welcome back into the vault. It's June, and June is my birthday month, so I decided to be incredibly selfish and talk about my favorite game franchise. Um, I'm not saying that it's the best, it's just my favorite, and it is the franchise of this little guy right here. This little guy right here. His name is Pitt, and he's the star of the Kid Icarus series, which has always, always ca just captured my imagination. If you go way back to the Nintendo Power Game calendar episode, I'm pretty sure I showed off a uh, Kid Icarus calendar, uh, calendar month in there, and man, looking at that stuff always just made me so excited. I always wanted to learn more. So just, this is the original one, the first game for NES. Uh, it's, it's really quite a remarkable little... Little guy, it's one of the gray box games, of which I can only think of three. They look like the original black boxers. Uh, there was uh, this one, there was Metroid, and there was Rad Racer from Square Enix. Squaresoft, sorry. Uh, here it is, Kid Icarus for NES. Here's the cart. Here is the manual, which has some really cool looking stuff in it. Um, this is back when uh, instruction manuals had like, I mean, look at that, look at that. Look at that artwork, it's so great. This thing is thick, too. Look, look at all this. Look at all this. This is all instruction manual, and it's all just the English stuff. Like, man, when we get to all the different monsters and whatnot, ah, oh, this stuff is so cool. So cool. So, um, easily the least played game in the franchise would be the second one. That is this guy, Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. Now, just look at the cover art on this one. This is some of my favorite artwork. I love artwork from this generation. You can see behind me, um, I have Donkey Kong for Game Boy uh, as well, which is another one of the really similar art styles. Uh, Mole Mania, Super Mario Land. Some of my favorite game covers of all time come from this, uh, this, this period. And uh, this game is great. This really took everything that the original Kid Icarus did and made it better. Uh, it's just a, it's everything a sequel should be. So. Here's a, it's a little poster here. We've got the uh, the cartridge itself, good old Game Boy games. And uh, here is the game's instruction manual, which is, again, pretty thick. Uh, they, they did this thing with the Game Boy instruction manuals where they didn't really make them in color, which always kind of drove me a little bananas. But, like, look at the artwork in this one. Like, look how great the artwork moved on to uh, once you got to this Game Boy stuff. And this is really where... This is one of my favorite pictures of Pitt ever. I love him. He's all, like chubby and chibi but he's like it's it's the same evolution that metroid went through um this is a very similar evolution because uh, metroid was originally on nes and they made a sequel for game boy which was great and they evolved the art style it's the same thing with pit except uh once they got to the super nintendo generation kid icarus just kind of disappeared so it was uh 20 some odd years before we got this treasure right here that is kid icarus uprising for the 3ds um this game is great. First off, I love the box, because uh, if you look in here, all the little squares, they got little pit heads in them. Uh, it's just all printed on the back of the, uh, the inlay here, which has uh, actual full artwork on it on the inside, which is really cool. Uh, they put so much production value into this game. Great voice acting. Instruction manual is a little weak sauce. It's really just a pamphlet, because that's what they were doing back then. But there was a lot of in-game instructions, too. So if you've never played... Kid Icarus Uprising for 3DS. I know it's got weird controls, but this is not Star Fox Zero. Play this game. It is so, so worth it. But as a bonus, one of my favorite Kid Icarus pieces in my collection is this gentleman right here. This is the Famicom Disk System version of the original Kid Icarus. This is the first release of Kid Icarus. That cover is way more interesting than this cover, right? I just infinitely better. So Famicom Disk System games came in these really cool plastic boxes. So unlike NES boxes, these were relatively easy to keep contained. So you have this little tome, which is the instruction manual. I don't know if you can see how thick that is, but this thing is no effing joke. And it's got a lot of the same um, artwork as the, uh, the, the NES manual, except it's got these cool stickers that go on your actual Famicom disc because um, these discs were essentially rewritable and whatnot. There was all sorts of weird stuff you could do with them. But, man, look at that. Look how cool that is. Oh, boy, and there's a little picture of him on the back. I love this so much. I love this world. It's so bizarre. The, the whole world of Pit and Kid Icarus is just great. So here's the actual disc itself. Uh, and the, the hard case cracks right on open, and 
there it is in the sleeve. That is what a Famicom disc looks like if you've never seen one before. Uh, they're really cool. I don't have a functioning Famicom disc system. I've been trying to get one for a couple of years. Uh, they've just always been a little bit outside of my price range, especially because they need to be repaired a lot. Um, but one of these days, I'm going to get one, and I'm going to play this on it because it's going to be awesome. So uh, that was uh, my little trip through my favorite video game franchise. I love Kid Icarus to death. I really hope they make a new one. Who knows, by the time this episode comes out, maybe they will have announced a new Kid Icarus game, and maybe I will grow my own wings and fly to the moon. Uh, thank you again for visiting me inside my vault. Uh, be sure to check out all the other great content here on the Geekade YouTube channel as well as Geekade.com. My name is Chris. Keep playing games.